graduating us in Caltrans District 11's first Clean California and Small Business events. For those who are unfamiliar with the Clean California Initiative, early last year, Caltrans joined Governor Gavin Newsom and the Secretary of the California Transportation Agency at that time, David Kim, to announce the Clean California Initiative. This is more than a billion dollar investment over the span of three years to clean California's transportation system. The Clean California Initiative was estimated to create between 10,000 to 11,000 new jobs and contribute to litter abatement. It also includes state and local beautification projects, public education, project design, construction, local support and engagement. Now, despite the increases in trash and littering since the beginning of the pandemic, Caltrans and community groups have made a significant impact. Caltrans as a whole has removed 267,000 cubic yards of trash. Now that is enough to fill 18,000 18, garbage trucks. And to supplement this increased litter, nearly 100 people were added to the Clean California workforce in 2021. Now this initiative is truly a statewide effort, which is why this event was specifically developed to share with the small business community and how they can take part in this effort. Now in today's event, we will begin by having Wishing Lima, the Clean California Project Manager, provide some opening remarks, followed by Nick Buenviaje, District 11's Clean California Public Affairs Manager, who will be providing an overview of Clean California and identify upcoming opportunities that will be available in District 11. We will then have Boyana Gutierrez with the Office of Innovative Design and Delivery explain today the job order contracting process. And then we will conclude today's event with Alex Aguirre, the district's small business liaison who will provide a small business overview. Now, with that said, I would like to thank you all again for making the effort to learn more about the Clean California Initiative and would like to pass the stage on to Wishing. Welcome, Wishing. Thank you, Margie, and welcome to everyone that is joining us today. I am Wishing Lima, Clean California Project Manager with Caltrans District 11. Construction of Clean California Local Grants Program projects must be completed by June 2024, and construction of State Administered Beautification Program projects must be completed by June 2023. These programs include various components, such as beautification projects, public education, project design, construction, local support and engagement. I wanted to emphasize that these initiatives focus on driving a cultural shift of shared responsibility and community pride for the cleanliness of our roadways through education and community engagement. It is important that all California communities need to know the impacts that littering has on natural resources, waterways, public safety, and health. Caltrans wants to encourage Californians to do their part to keep our state clean in the hopes that once this Clean California effort is complete, these practices will remain sustainable for years to come. How we can all begin to do our part is by starting in, all, in our own backyards and our neighborhoods. As part of Governor Gavin Newsom's 1.1 billion Clean California Initiative, California is awarding 312 million for 126 state administered beautification projects along the state highway system. 98% of these projects will benefit historically underserved or excluded communities. In March of this year, following Governor Gavin Newsom's announcement of 296 million in Clean California grants to underserved communities throughout the state, the Clean California Local Grant Program will fund three projects in National City, El Cajon, and Imperial Beach. Projects located in San Diego, as I mentioned, include National City East Side I-805 Community Greenbelt Project. This is a 4.9 million project uh, for a multi-use path and park environments along underutilized public right-of-way between Division Street and Plaza Boulevard. The other one is the El Cajon Oakdale Alameda Gateway Beautification Project, a 5, a 5 million project that will create a gateway entrance into the city near Interstate 8 with public art murals, decorative paving, 
traffic signal cabinet decoration, decorative street lighting, and interpret interpretive signage. The last one, the last but not least, Imperial Beach 10th Streetscape Enhancements. This is an 863,580 860, project to provide missing sidewalk connections between Donox Avenue and Palm Avenue, including safety curb extensions, enhanced crosswalks, and lighting. Since launching Clean California in July until March of 2022, Caltrans has removed nearly 7,400 tons of litter from the state highway system enough to fill 134 Olympic-sized swimming pools and hired 623 new team members as part of Clean California, including 498 maintenance workers who collect litter and remove graffiti. To keep the momentum going, I'd like to introduce Nick Buen Viaje, the Clean California Public Affairs Manager for Caltrans District 11, to share with you all the specific impacts that are being made in District 11 through the Clean California Initiative, as well as share what opportunities the small business community can expect to see in the upcoming months for the state administered beautification projects. Welcome, Nick. The floor is yours. Thanks, Wishing. I uh, hope you guys all can hear me okay. My name is Nick Bonviaje. I'm part of the Clean California team. Uh, I work in legislative affairs and community engagement. Uh, many of you may also recognize me if you participate in our small business council. I also serve as the district DVBE advocate. Um, my role here today is to really give you uh, an overview of the Clean California program. Um, I, I want to get you as excited about Clean California as we are, uh, because this is something different than we've we've done. You know, many many of you may have worked with us on other transportation projects, but but Clean California is a unique program, and uh, so we also hope that uh, we have some of you that have maybe not worked with Caltrans before. So I'd like to start with a brief overview of uh, what Caltrans does, uh, and then maybe a history about why we have Clean California. Um, and then we'll jump into the components of the program itself, some of the things that are happening uh, in the San Diego and Imperial County regions. And then what I'm sure most of you are most excited to hear about is the upcoming Clean California Caltrans State Beautification Projects. Uh, and we'll give you a little bit of information about what we're doing on those projects and when those are gonna happen. Uh, go ahead to the next slide, please, Alex. So just an overview of, of what Caltrans is, in case you haven't worked with us before, we are the State Department of Transportation. That means we're responsible for all things transportation in California, uh, everything from uh, roads and highways, which most of you associate us with, but we also work on uh, active transportation projects and multimodal projects, even uh, air, rail, and in some instances, waterways. Um, and in the San Diego and Imperial County regions, which District 11 represent, we cover an area from the U.S.-Mexico border all the way up to the county line with Orange County and Riverside, and then from the Pacific Ocean to the Arizona border. So we cover a large region. We have a lot of projects that we're involved in, um, and we do everything from reviewing uh, you know, the environmental process and planning the transportation system, designing it, building it, and then ultimately maintaining it. Uh, you know, our, our ultimate mission and goal is to provide a safe and reliable transportation system uh, that serves all people and respects the environment. And that last line is key uh, as we start talking about what is Clean California. It's, it's really a great program that allows us to uh, use the transportation network that we have and create projects for people and for our planet. Uh, I like this uh, uh, slide. Uh, this is uh, uh, some of the different elements that we have and things that we prioritize on our transportation network, which is safety, uh, modality. Uh, again, then you have the uh, serving people and planet. Let's go to the next slide, Alex. So, with all those things that Caltrans is responsible for, uh, a major component of our program is our maintenance division. Uh, and their role is to make sure that our transportation network functions safely and efficiently, and that people and product and, and goods and services can all get where they need to go in a safe and reliable and efficient manner. Uh, here's some, of the, some images of some of the things that we do. 
which include everything from maintaining the electrical system, uh, doing safety projects and, and landscaping, tree trimming, road repair, storm water cleaning. Uh, I like this image in the bottom here of uh, some people doing inspections on the Coronado Bridge. Uh, so we, we have all components of the transportation system that we maintain. Uh, including that is, is the, the cleanliness and the safety of our transportation network. And uh, over the last couple of years, if you look into the bottom right chart here, you can see an increase in the money that we've spent keeping our transportation system clean. You know, in the uh, year 2020, uh, we spent more than uh, $7 million in District 11 just on litter uh, removal, and then it went up to $10 million in 2021. And this is really a zero sum game for us. While it's important to keep our roadway safe because we have to put people out on the roadway to pick that litter up and it uh, um, it's a risk to the traveling public, uh, it takes away dollars and uh, working hours from all the other things that we do to maintain our transportation system. Next slide, please. And as we saw, Despite our best efforts, the problem kept increasing. Uh, you know, Caltrans as a state, we spent over $115 million last year just for moving litter and debris from our highway. Uh, we made improvements with our program, with partnerships, with education and outreach, uh, but the problem still continued. And despite our best efforts, it, it, it wasn't just a problem unique to the highway. Uh, in fact, we saw it in parks, we saw it at transit centers, we saw it in local roads. Uh, Time Magazine even wrote a, a piece about how this was impacting uh, every major city in the country, uh, so much so that um, actually recently the United Nations formed a, a new uh, potential treaty. It's the biggest environmental treaty since the Paris Climate Accord uh, to try and tackle some of the, the waste problems and single-use plastics that are uh, really impacting our communities and our environment. So. The issue here is what can we do about it? Next slide, please. And as I mentioned, all, all product and people and goods and services use our transportation system. Uh, and here's some of the items that we often see that fall off of the back of trucks uh, with toilet paper spills, insulation spills. We often have large furniture and all these uh, create a safety issue for both our personnel and the traveling public. Next slide, please. And so for us, the solution is the Clean California Initiative. This is, as Wishing and Margie mentioned, a $1.1 billion initiative, which was proposed by Gavin, Governor Gavin Newsom as part of the California Comeback Plan and was approved by the state legislature last year. Uh, it has components of public outreach, uh, community engagement and local grants, state beautification projects, and the employment opportunities. As mentioned, our goal is to create between 10 and 11,000 jobs uh, for people to help improve our cleanliness of our transportation system. A key component of that is that one third of all the, the funds were dedicated for local cities, counties, tribes, and transit agencies. So to make sure that we're having an impact, not just on the state transportation network, but a, a really comprehensive clean state, clean California. Next slide, please. So some of the goals of the program obviously is to impact our, our local roads, parks, pathways, and transit centers and improve the, the both cleanliness and community appeal. Um, we also want to engage underserved communities, both through the projects that we initiate and employment opportunities. Uh, many of the programs geared to hire people uh, such as at-risk youth or people experiencing homelessness, people transitioning uh, post-incarceration, uh, or we have veterans employment programs as well. Uh, here's just a, a, a preview of things to come over the bottom right is a, a beautification project, not part of Clean California, but I think a really good example of how we can use transportation projects to create really strong community elements. This is a project on Interstate 8 and Dogwood in Imperial County that included hardscaping and artistic fencing. Uh, and the picture on the left is the current uh, California State Transportation Agency Secretary, uh, Tokes Omashakin, talking to some of the uh, newly hired Clean California employees in San Diego. Next slide, please. 
So the first component of the uh, Clean California Initiative was expanding our employment opportunities. Uh, as mentioned, this included hiring uh, in the, just the first couple months, several hundred uh, maintenance workers. We did that through hosting hiring events, uh, both in San Diego and Imperial County. I think our first one had several hundred people attend. Uh, and again, we were really trying to create employment opportunities for, for people that needed employment the most. Uh, it, it, it provided us the opportunity to put a lot of people on the roadway and have an immediate impact. Uh, the first goal of Clean California. Next slide, please. Those individuals who we've hired, as mentioned, uh, both there was jobs available as state employees, but then also uh, employment programs where we could have people uh, get work experience, uh, as mentioned, whether they were experiencing homelessness or post incarceration, get them the job experience, uh, employment training interview skills, and then get them into the work workforce permanently. So all the folks that we've put on the ground doing this work uh, have picked up almost 60,000 cubic yards just in the San Diego region uh, this year. That's enough to cover the San Diego Zoo. Uh, if we have any football fans, that's enough to cover 109 NFL football fields. It's a lot of trash that we're picking up on a daily basis. Next slide, please. And so, as we have that immediate impact, the next goal is to create that cultural shift uh, through community pride, shared responsibility, and really ensure that, that this is a, a unified effort throughout the state, both from the people doing the work and the people that can help us prevent this issue from making its way into our streets and parks and transportation network. So, with the education campaign, uh, we have a, a $33 million outreach uh, and education campaign that will launch this summer. So you will start to see Cal, uh, Clean California all over the place. Uh, but in the meantime, we've been hitting community events and transportation expos. We've been doing school visits. Here's some of the photos that we've been at Earth Fest in Balboa Park um, and doing school visits where we're uh, giving kids the education, but also the tools like litter pickers make a difference in their community. Uh, the bottom right is also a uh, similar but separate program uh, where we're running a stormwater campaign to really focused on how we impact uh, water quality with the let's change this to that uh, education component. Next slide, please. We've been doing school visits. Uh, the, here's a picture of some of the classroom education that we've done in local schools. Uh, another component is doing events at local landfills. We found that a lot of the transportation system is impacted by people transporting waste. Uh, and so we've done education programs with I Love a Clean San Diego and Surfrider and our local waste management companies where we've provided education uh, at those centers, talking to people, uh, but also through the I Love a Clean San Diego grant, we were able to provide those people with free tarps. So we're not just teaching people about the law, which is to completely cover and tarp your load when transporting waste, but also providing people with the resources they need to do that correctly. Uh, and the top left is also a Clean California pledge that we've developed that aimed at uh, youth to really start get them thinking about the impacts that they have on their local environment and the behaviors that they do uh, that, can, that can or can't impact that. Next slide, please. The third component of the Clean California Initiative is really aimed at how do we engage our communities? And we've done that through the local grants program that Wishing mentioned, uh, nearly $300 million statewide for local projects in local communities for beautification efforts. Um, but we're also doing events, community cleanups, and other programs. Uh, this image on the left here is a before and after of one of the first Clean California programs. But this gives you an idea of, of the intent of Clean California. We want to repurpose unused spaces and transform them into spaces of community pride that people want to take care of uh, and, and start to create that cultural shift with you know, public spaces that people can use and be proud of that they want to take care of. The image on the right is uh, the National City Grant that Wishing mentioned. Uh, they were the first uh, local city in the state to receive uh, the, the Clean California announcement with nearly $5 million. 
And we're also very excited because we're pairing that with our own state beautification project, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Next slide, please. Here's just a quick I, uh, scope of, of what some of these local projects entail with the National City Eastside I-805 Community Greenbelt Project. If you're familiar with National City, there is a pathway that connects some of the local schools uh, like Rancho de la Nación and El Toyon to the parks uh, and local shopping centers. And National City is going to use that $5 million to beautify and, and clean up their active transportation elements, uh, include uh, trash receptacles, education components, and really repurpose that space for the community uh, with those important community elements like schools and parks. The city of El Cajon also received $5 million for their Oakdale Alameda Gateway Beautification Project. Uh, and this is near state route or Interstate 8. Uh, well, they'll use a similar concept to use public mural art, uh, decorative paving, painted traffic signal cabinets, decorative street lighting, and other types of signage, uh, sidewalk and crosswalk improvements, storm drain filters, and uh, vegetation, tree plantings to really impl improve their public space uh, in the gateway to El Cajon. The third local project is in, in Imperial Beach, where they received nearly a million dollars to beautify the 10th Avenue area between Donex Avenue and Palm Avenue to include uh, pedestrian improvements, lighting, beautification elements like public art installations, benches, seawall, and landscaping uh, in the city of Imperial Beach. And you can see some of the pictures here showing what the current conditions are and what the plans are to beautify those public spaces that we're really excited about. Let's go to the next slide. I'd like to talk to you about one of the programs that we're using to engage the community that I think could really be an opportunity for a lot of your small businesses. And that's the Adopt a Highway program. Uh, if you receive our small business newsletter, you may have seen an article in March uh, featuring one of our DVBE businesses that participates as a contractor in the Adopt the Highway program. It's really an exciting uh, public-private partnership that we can have both, both business sponsors, uh, families, volunteer groups, or even individuals help us take care of the transportation system uh, and, and also get some recognition in your local community in exchange. Uh, so some of the things that our Adopt the Highway sponsors or volunteers get is the recognition panels that you see on the side of the roadway. So everybody knows who's taking care of that corridor in, uh, and helping the Caltrans maintenance teams. We also do social media promotion and uh, media events. That image on the top right is an event that we did uh, on 94 and, and Euclid with some of the community groups and fraternities and business sponsors that helped take care of that corridor and had a lot of local uh, and state elected officials come out to really thank the people that helped make a difference in their communities. Uh, and, and all those groups got some really good media coverage as well. But one of the exciting components that the Clean California program is allowing us to do is provide a up to $250 stipend per month per highway adoption. Uh, that does mean that depending on the locations and the size, you can have more than one adoption, but it's really a way for us to uh, provide an incentive for our business sponsors, for our volunteers to come and join us and participate in this Adopt the Highway program. Uh, if you'd like more information, we will be putting the uh, link in the chat and you can connect with our Adopt the Highway coordinators on available spaces and, and what that entails. Uh, normally, the commitment is, is a clean, cleaning of your adoption of at least once a month. Uh, we also provide you with the safety gear like vests and hard hats and litter pickers and uh, bags, as well as safety training uh, when we issue your permit for that adoption. Next slide, please. Another program that we're using to engage local communities is through our free disposal days or our dump days. Uh, the San Diego and Imperial County or Caltrans District 11 region is leading the way right now in the state. We've held 19 free disposal events uh, this year. Uh, and it's really given us the opportunity to not only provide people with the opportunity to dispose of things correctly, because we do find that to be a common problem on the highway with illegal dumping uh, with people that either don't know or don't want to dispose of things correctly. 
So these events are, are uh, spread throughout the counties and allow us to connect with people, provide them with the free opportunity to come use our facilities and get rid of the things that they don't know how to get rid of. But it also gives us the opportunity to, to do community outreach and education. As you can see in that bottom left picture, we had a lot of people showing up that didn't know how to correctly tie down the stuff that they were transporting or were transporting loose items that often fly out on the highway and create uh, both environmental and safety problems for us. Uh, one example, last month, we held an event in Kearney Mesa where we had nearly 400 vehicles attend uh, in just the four hours that we were open and collected nearly 900 cubic yards of, of unwanted waste and debris. We will be continuing this program uh, at least to the end of the year with uh, monthly um, and minimum monthly events. And we are also uh, partnering with local community groups, local agencies and cities so that we can continue to provide this service county, counties wide. Next slide, please. And the final component that we're really using for community engagement is partnered community cleanups. Uh, in addition to all the work that we're doing on our property, we wanna give people the power to impact their own communities. And we're doing that through partnerships with local agencies and cities uh, with local elected officials and also community groups. So here's just some of the images of com uh, community cleanups that we've done uh, with some of the San Diego City Council members. We've worked with groups like I Love the Clean San Diego and South Bay Sustainable Communities with uh, local resource offer officers at some of our law enforcement agencies, um, groups like Urban Corps and Groundworks and some of the uh, CDCs uh, to really make sure that we're reaching uh, the community and not doing this work by ourselves. We want to mobilize people uh, to, to have an impact in their own communities. If you're interested, please feel free to contact us and we can work together on how we can set up a, a cleanup in your community. And finally, for the fourth element of the Clean California Initiative, what I'm sure you're all most excited to hear about, Alex, if we can go to the next slide, is our Caltrans state beautification projects. These are projects that are happening on our transportation network on state property. As Wishing mentioned, $312 million went out for these projects and District 11 is tackling 11 projects in San Diego and Imperial County. Here's just some elements that, uh, of projects that we've done in the past that reflects some of the visions that we have going forward with how we beautify spaces on our transportation system. Next slide, please. So again, $312 million for state beautification projects. Our goal is to repurpose and reutilize some of our underutilized state facilities and state properties. We wanna make sure that we're beautifying the front doors to our communities with these beautification projects and really looking at how we impact quality of life. We're really excited about these projects because all of them were developed uh, with community collaboration. All of these projects that have been selected are part of some community plan, uh, whether it's their community planning efforts or, or active transportation plans or safety improvement programs. We really worked hard to make sure that we were addressing the, the needs and wants that existed in our local communities. So we wanted to make sure that everything we do is aligning with the community goals, um, but also impacting quality of life for the health, the safety, the connectivity, the climate action, uh, and really making sure that we're using these projects in underserved areas to support our equity goals and partnerships. Uh, here's some of the examples. The upper left one is an area uh, in, in Northern California where they beautified a freeway underpass. Let's go to the next slide, Alex. So I wanna give you a high level overview of some of our projects. And as Wishing mentioned, he's our project manager. So uh, we can answer any questions about these specific projects, but here's a map of some of the selected projects in San Diego County that include uh, from the border near the San Ysidro Port of Entry, all the way to North County, in Vista and Escondido, Ramona, and then also in our urban core, uh, such as downtown San Diego, uh, Logan Heights, City Heights, and National City, or Barrio Logan, excuse me. 
Uh, next slide is a map also showing the projects that we have in Imperial County, two projects both near our Calexical Port of Entry, uh, and also a community improvement program that will have locations spread out Imperial County, uh, including some of the cities listed here. So some of the specific projects that we have with the first one being our Boston Avenue Community Improvement Project. This is one that we're really excited about that we've been working with uh, the community groups such as the Portside community and the uh, Barrio Logan community, the Environmental Health Coalition, as well as the city of San Diego and something that the, the community has really wanted for a long time. And uh, some of the elements that we will be doing as part of our Clean California State Beautification Project that will go out for advertisement this summer uh, through the design bid build uh, uh, mechanism is we will be constructing a bike pedestrian path elements, uh, doing landscape installation, fencing, lighting, and recreational facilities. This is in the Barrio Logan community along southbound Interstate 5. Uh, between 29th and 32nd Street. Um, again, we're working with the city and the community uh, so that ultimately after we make our improvements, we can relinquish this 3.5 acre parcel to the city so that they can continue to develop this into a park space that the community has so desperately wanted uh, for so many years. Next slide, please. Some other projects that we'll be advertising this summer include the Imperial County Community Improvement Project that I mentioned. Uh, the main elements here is that we'll be installing bus stop shelters uh, with shade facilities, which is very important to the, to the transit users in the community in Imperial County, especially in the summertime. Uh, we'll also be doing roadway median improvements, uh, sidewalk and pedestrian enhancements uh, at multiple locations throughout Imperial County. This project will be delivered through Minor B, which I'm sure many of our small businesses are very uh, familiar with and something that we're proud in our district that uh, our Minor B program is, uh, is basically exclusively uh, small business work. Another project that'll be going out for advertisement this summer is the Downtown Ramona Enhancement Project. Uh, this, we've worked with the community group, such as the, the Ramona Planning Group uh, and their Historic Town uh, Preservation Society to make sure that we're uh, improving the safety and the walkability of the downtown heart of their business district. We'll be painting light posts, adding textured and asphalt concrete crosswalks uh, to increase both pedestrian safety, but also uh, increase that community identity and making sure that we're maintaining that historical feel of uh, this unincorporated town of Ramona up on State Route 67 and State Route 78. Um, again, this will advertise this summer uh, through the JOC method, which we'll be talking about in just a bit. Next slide, please. Some other upcoming projects that will go out for advertisement this summer. Again, back in Imperial County, we have the Calexico International Gateway Project. Uh, one of the things that makes District 11 unique is our proximity and our connection to Mexico and the U.S.-Mexico border. So this project will serve as a, as a gateway with hardscaping and a gateway monument uh, near the Calexico Port of Entry at State Route 7 in Unilever. ...that come uh, through the international border into Imperial County, but also into the state of California. Uh, this will advertise this summer and will be delivered through design, bid, build. Uh, back in San Diego County, we have the Vista Community Improvement Project. The main elements here will be landscaping and hardscaping on State Route 78 Vista Village Drive, which is really the, the gateway or the entryway to the city of Vista. Um, this will also be a JOC delivery. Next slide, please. So if we're doing a, an international gateway in Imperial County, we have to do one in San Diego County at one of the busiest land port of entries in the world. And that's the San Isidro International Gateway Project. Uh, this 
location has an existing sign that's been there for many decades that many people who cross the border probably have not even noticed because of the overgrown and dead vegetation and the dilapidated sign. So this project is going to replace that gateway monument sign as you come across the US-Mexico border into San Diego and the state of California. We'll also be doing landscape and hardscape elements, uh, installing accent lighting, um, and making sure that we have a, a community identity uh, that reflects the, the border community that we are, um, but again, also welcoming people into the state of California. This project will be designed, bid, build, and we expect to advertise this project in San Isidro in September of this year. Wishing mentioned the National City Community Improvement Project, which again, we're very excited because we get to build upon the local grant that the city is working on uh, and their Greenbelt project. But our project will uh, take place on southbound Interstate 805 near Plaza Boulevard, where we'll be doing landscape, lighting, fencing uh, and pedestrian elements uh, near that intersection um, and ultimately upgrading some of the bi bicycle trail elements there. Uh, this project will be part of the JOC delivery and we expect to advertise it this summer as well. Next slide, please. Another really exciting program that we have is in the City Heights Community Improvement Project. This is a, a really a community beautification effort that builds upon uh, the project that we had on Interstate 15, where we uh, did the center line and built those, those transit elements in the, the center median of Interstate 15 in City Heights, and where we also worked with our regional partners to build those transit centers at El Cajon and University. So this project, uh, which we will advertise in November of this year, will be part of the Minor B program. And it, it will be installing artistic elements, uh, decorate, decorations and, and other uh, art structures on the uh, structures and planter boxes outside of those transit centers on Interstate 15 University and El Cajon. We'll also look to implement an art program in the downtown San Diego area of Interstate 5 uh, to beautify some of the giant concrete retaining wall structures that we have uh, really in the heart of our in the heart of our city and county. Um, and this is an important spot because it connects so many elements uh, such as our open space uh, like Balboa Park, uh, major attractions like the Port of San Diego and the zoo and community centers like Little Italy and connecting to the San Diego airport and other landmarks. Um, and so we'll look to beautify this area which will go out, this project will go out for advertisement in December of this year uh, through the design bid build mechanism. In the next slide, uh, the last two projects that we'll be implementing in District 11 as part of the Clean California Initiative, the last two state beautification projects. Uh, one is taking place in Escondido. This project will go out for advertisement in December of this year uh, through design, bid and build. Uh, and this project is really focused on the gateway or the entryway to the city of El Cajon through, uh, I'm sorry, the city of Escondido at State Route 78, uh, where we'll do some hardscape and landscape improvements, installing a gateway monument and other decorative features, including wayfinders, um, and at the entrances to the Escondido Creek Trail so that we're incorporating both uh, car improvements and, and pedestrian improvements and active transportation elements. Again, this will be advertised in December. And the last but not least of our state beautification projects that we'll be doing is a bridge safety enhancement project. This will have multiple locations across San Diego County uh, taking place on Interstates 5, Eight and also State Route 94, uh, really in the, the urban center of our city. Uh, this will be another one of our minor B delivery uh, projects, and we expect to advertise this in December of this year. The main components of this project will include safety measures at, at our uh, bridge underpasses, slope paving, uh, secure fencing, vegetation management, and a hardscape beautification elements. 
And that brings us to the end of my uh, portion. Uh, I, I hope you guys are excited about our upcoming projects and really all the things that we're doing in our region to make an impact and in our state really. Uh, so that really this is a, a shared effort. Uh, Clean California starts with all of us. Uh, we want you guys to be uh, advocates of this program uh, because it matters. And also these are the types of programs and projects that we wanna do more of in the future. I think one thing I didn't mention is that local grant program that nearly $300 million that was awarded this year. Uh, we are, are looking at a, a proposal in this year's state budget that includes a, another $100 million uh, grant. So, uh, you know, we want to make this a successful program so that we can continue to do more of these programs that impact the community and also provide uh, all of our small business contractors work opportunities. So, thank you guys all for, for your time. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, let me see if we have any questions, but for all our attendees, uh, all our questions can um, can be entered into the Q and A field as as you have them. So, but if you don't see this option, click on the uh, right hand lower corner of your screen. There's three dots there uh, next to the chat icon, and you can select the Q and A. So we do have a few. Nick, is it required that a small business have an office in District 11 in order to participate on any of the projects? Thanks, Alex. I took myself as a, a, a on mute, but um. Yeah, I'm not sure if the small business office or, or wishing can can answer that. Um, I don't believe that to be the case. I believe as long as you're uh, registered as, as, a, as a contractor with the state of California and DGS that you'll be able to apply for these projects. Okay, and they, um, anyone else too can can reach out to the small business team, and we'll Alex and I can put our information, and she will be providing a presentation as well. So a lot of the information that you or questions that you may have later on after our event can be posed. Um, send us an email or give us a call. Um, let me see. I have another question here. Where can we find out more information about Minor B? I, I think, um, Nick, I'll, I'll just answer the question for that. So it'll be a, a lot of our Minor B projects can be found in Cal ePercure, which is a D, DGS platform. It's a marketplace that is, if you're not familiar, really would be um, familiarize yourself with that platform as. Um, all the uh, state of California agencies uses that platform for um, contracts that are ready for bid um, and uh, information on contracts. So, um, so a lot of these information um, regarding minor B contracts, we can pose it to Wishing if he's available um, to answer as well, or we can provide you the answer um, after the event. Okay, and some of the questions are specific to small business asking to provide uh, their services. So we'll connect with you uh, on a separate um, communication. So we will provide you with our information when um, Alex provide her small business overview and uh, you can reach us by sending us an email or giving us a call. So anyone else, any questions regarding Nick's presentation? There's a lot of projects that are going to be advertising um, the rest of the year. So please keep an eye out on those information. Um, we do have um, all the information Nick provided on the screen. We will also provide the, the entire presentation for today's event to all the attendees today. So. And I believe that is it. Hold on a second, Nick. 
Uh, Nick, uh, any money going towards homeless education or mitigate homeless issues? And I believe we've already started doing that. Yeah, that, that is not part of the Clean California initiative other than through our employment programs uh, where we're aiming to create job opportunities for people that are experiencing homelessness. Um, but outside of the Clean California initiative, we are uh, one of the many regional and state partners that are addressing that issue, uh, both in for our purposes of maintaining the safe transportation system, uh, but also we, uh, we partner with all of the local service providers and outreach professionals so that we can provide people that are sheltering on state property, the, the outreach and services and support that they need uh, so that we don't have reoccurring issues on the state highway system, but so that they can uh, be relocated into safer situations. And ultimately, uh, the goal is uh, long term housing and long term employment. Thank you, Nick. I also see some some interest in the uh, adopt the highway program. So I know we have the link in the chat, but we'll post that again. Um, some interest in Northern California, which is great. Um, my goal is to also get some people interested in the Southern California region. And on our local webpage, we do have a uh, GIS map that shows areas that are still available for adoption. Uh, we have, I think, nearly 500 adoptions in the city, uh, in the county of San Diego and Imperial County. Um, but again, that's a great program, a way to get your small business recognized. Um, but also, we currently have that up to $250 stipend, uh, which makes that program that much more enticing. Yes, I agree. And we do have that information as well. If, you, if anyone's interested, you can contact our small business team. Okay, I think that is it for all our questions. Thank you so much, Nick. Thanks, everyone. I'll still be here throughout the presentation if any other questions come up. Thank you. So uh, now, uh, let me see here. Now I'd like to introduce Boyana Gutierrez with our Headquarters Design, Office of Innovative Design and Delivery to explain our job order contracting process. Boyana? Hi. Um, so thank you for having me here today uh, and thank you for the introduction. Again, my name is Boyana Gutierrez. Uh, I'm not in District 11. I represent our headquarters in Sacramento and um, our Office of Innovative Design and Delivery has been working on job order contracting, um, which is a new contracting method for Caltrans. Um, uh, I'm not able to move to the next slide. Oh, thank you. So we're going to talk about a few things today. I'm going to give you the uh, overview of the job order contracting or JOC uh, project delivery method. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the projects, uh, which you can expect and where to find those projects, and we'll have some time for questions and answers. So job order contracting. Caltrans was given job order contracting authority about a year ago for Clean California program and Broadband Middle Mile Network. Um, that was uh, AB 149 for Clean California, and that's a two-year program, and SB 156 for bro broadband, which is a three-year program. So these are the only programs or funding sources um, that we can use when utilizing job order contracting. So I'm going to get into more details about what job order contracting is now on the next slide. So uh, some of you might be familiar with service or on-call contracts. Um, job order contracting is very similar to that, but it's used for construction services. And our main contract is basically a master agreement. And when you bid on a project, you will be bidding on the master agreement. Uh, the master agreement will not guarantee any work, but we will issue work orders, and that's how we will award the construction contracts. Um, the contracts will be awarded to the lowest responsible and res uh, responsive and responsible bidder. And uh, job order contracts are 12-month contracts, so those master agreements are issued for 12 months. And we have the option to extend them for uh, two 12-month periods if mutually agreed. So Caltrans and the contractor have to agree to that. Um, and then going to the next slide, um, we're going to go uh, discuss a little bit more what the process entails. So we will use the invitation for bid process to um, basically procure the master agreements. Uh, invitation for bids will be posted on Kali Procure, 
Um, I think that was discussed. Maria mentioned it a couple minutes ago. If you do not have the Cali Procure account, if you're not familiar with the website, definitely get familiar with that. Um, also in Caltrans uh, construction website, um, you can find a spot, a contractor's corner. Uh, if you look under advertised projects, you will also be able to find a list of the projects they're advertised. So that's how you can basically uh, look for those invitations for bids. So invitation for bids will include bid instructions, um, and that will also require some hard copy submittals. It will resemble minor B process, if you're familiar with that. Um, but they will also require mandatory pre-bid meetings. So make sure you attend the meetings, because if you do not attend meetings, we will not accept your bid. Um, invitation for bid will define a general geographic area. It will provide plans. Plans are more kind of resemble our standard details. Um, and it will also provide uh, special provisions. Uh, one thing that's unique to job order contracting is a fixed unit price list. And I have a slide on that. I think uh, a next the slide after that will kind of show you what that looks like. Uh, but we'll basically provide a fixed unit price list and contractors will bid on adjustment factors. Um, so basically we multiply those numbers, the quantities, adjustment factors, and everything else, and sum up the total that was going to be the lowest, that's what will determine the lowest bid. Um, invitation for bid will also include a contract for prequalification. Uh, the process is fairly straightforward. It's not significantly different than what we typically do, uh, just showing the contractor license, Department of Industrial Relations registration, and it will also include the bidder question. So um, once we go through invitation for bid process, uh, the lowest responsible and responsive bidder will be awarded the job with a contract master agreement. So the master agreement, that's the contract between Caltrans and the contractor. So as I said, those are 12-month contracts. They can be extended for up to two 12-month periods. And job with a contract master agreements, they do not guarantee any work. There's no uh, minimum uh, work guaranteed with that, but the contract, we do set the contract maximum, which is typically between $1 and $5 million. So the construction work actually happens when Caltrans issues work orders under those job order contract master agreements. Um, another thing that's kind of unique to job order contracting is that work orders require a joint scope meeting. So Caltrans uh, will kind of contemplate a project, prepare some preliminary contract documents, will call a contractor, request a meeting, most likely meet in a field, and then kind of see if all um, uh, bid items that we have in the fixed unit price list can cover the work, uh, kind of agree on quantities, schedule, working days, and so on. And so once that, you know, informal agreement is reached, we issue a work order, a construction contract at that point in time. So the construction contract will include a bid book. We use the term bid book, although there's nothing to bid on at that point in time, but that's a standard term. Um, it will also give the exact location of work to be performed. You might have some additional plans. So um, standard details or details related to uh, fixing a price list items, they're already defined in invitation for bids. So in work orders, we might provide some additional information, uh, such as, hey, here's the layout sheet, and from this station to this station, we're going to have this detail, and in this section, we're going to have the following detail. So that's the difference between plans um, in, in the invitation for bids and the work orders. And special provisions uh, should be the exact same special provision as invitation for bid. Um, so work orders is also when we uh, have the DDBE commitment for Clean California projects. Uh, contractors are required to provide payment and performance bonds and insurance for each work order. And uh, we use the stipulated unit price, which is basically the fixed unit price with adjustment factor to price out all work orders. So um, I think some of you might have a question about uh, payment and performance bonds and insurance. Uh, so maybe I'm going to answer that ahead of time. So during the invitation for bid process, the very first step, um, contractors will come in uh, to complying with bond and insurance requirements. Uh, we'll not ask you to provide the specific information. At the work order level, that's when you will be asked to provide um, performance bonds uh, and insurance. So, and if we can go to the next slide now, please. So this is the price proposal example. So this is somewhat different than what we use in our standard projects. Uh, if you look to the left side of the table, where it says fixed unit price list, 
Uh, that information is provided by Caltrans at the time of invitation for bid. Uh, we'll give you the item number, item code, description, unit of measure, we'll give quantity, and then one thing that's different is we'll also provide a fixed unit price. The fixed unit price that Caltrans provides that's typically for labor equipment and materials, and if there's something specific defined in the special provisions. Uh, information to the left, where you can see on the top, proposer to fill out, and the text is filled out in blue. That's the information that's going to be provided by the contractor. So basically, contractors are bidding adjustment factors. The factor can be any number uh, greater than zero. Um, and uh, the, if you multiply the fixed unit price and the adjustment factor, that is the stipulated unit price. And then item total amount, that's the quantity multiplied by the stipulated unit price. And the sum of all items is the total amount. So that's the lowest total price proposal is awarded the job with a contract master agreement. Um, and then um, once the job with a contract master agreement is awarded, these are the prices that the contractor commits to perform the work under. So when we issue work orders, these are the prices they use to cost out the work order. And if we can go to the next slide. So this is just a six month look ahead, anticipated job or contract projects. Um, we have a total of five projects in the three districts. Um, specifically, District 11 has one job or contract uh, related to landscaping work. Um, those projects will be advertised um, sometimes this summer. Uh, there are multiple more projects coming up. Uh, they're not on this list, but they're contemplated for the next fiscal year. And you should be able to find that information on the the contractor's corner um, um, ad, um, advertise projects and look ahead projects. There are a couple of different tabs that you can click on and links that you can click on to find what's coming up. Um, so that's all I have here. And now uh, the next slide is just questions and answers if you have any questions for me. Thank you so much, Bayana. And if you all the attendees, if you note the information on the screen for contact information, I would suggest saving that information. If you have uh, questions about job order contracting, um, the process, and um, let me see if we have any questions. Where will the job order contracting uh, project be advertised? The job order contracts will be advertised on Cal E Procure website. Uh, the same process as what we do for minor B projects. Thank you. And I believe, let me see the QA again. That is it. That's the question for us, Bayana. Thank you so much for the information. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll write, go ahead and get into our small business program overview and we'll welcome back Alex to the stage. Thank you, Maria. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Aguirre. I'm the district small business liaison for Caltrans District 11. So let's go ahead and get into this presentation. So first we're gonna talk about what a district small business liaison is. So each of Caltrans's 12 districts have at least one district small business liaison, also known as a DSBL. And because each district operates individually, procurement processes may differ amongst the districts. So your best resource would be the DSBL for the district that you wish to work with to help with identifying what your best next steps are as far as doing business with that specific district. Uh, DSBLs do serve as the district's primary point of contact for small business related concerns. And this includes efforts to increase the participation of certified small businesses, disabled veteran business enterprises and disadvantaged business enterprises. Um, on Caltrans contracts and procurements. In addition, DSBLs uh, provide outreach and advocacy services. I and the other district small business liaisons are your point of contact when you're trying to work with our department. So on this slide, um, you'll see it covers the certifications that Caltrans recognizes. Um, there are three main certifications that we recognize. So there's the small business umbrella, which includes micro business and the small business for the purpose of public work certification. 
Um, we also recognize the Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise, um, which seeks to help uh, armed force veterans with service-related disabilities who have left the military and are seeking opportunities for their businesses. And then the third certification that we recognize is the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise certification, which seeks to address disparity between some businesses and others in terms of access to economic opportunity. And it also seeks to level the playing field for new businesses. Uh, as far as who certifies what, the Department of General Services or DGS certifies the small business, micro business, and the small business for the for the purpose of public work certification. And DGS also certifies the Disabled Veteran Business Enterprise or DVBE certification. Now for the DBE certification, which is the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise, this is certified through any of the 10 agencies within California that is also known as the California Unified Certification Program. We call this uh, CUCP for short. And I apologize if you hear the train in the background. I am at our district office and it's right by the, the train track. So, um, and then for those 10 agencies, I'll name some of the ones that it includes. The main one um, that I wanna highlight is the, uh, the Caltrans, specifically Office of Civil Rights will certify for the DBE. And then some other ones include San Diego County Airport Authority, the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, as well as the San Mateo County Transit District and LA uh, County Metropolitan Transportation um, Authority or LA Metro. So that's just um, some of them, just to name a few. Now on this slide, you can see what Caltrans's goals are in regards to these certifications. So for state funded contracts, we do have a 25% small business goal and a 5% um, DVBE goal. Now for federally funded contracts, we have a 22.2% uh, DBE goal. And that is um, when a project has even $1 of federal funds, you can expect to see some type of DBE goal. Okay, now I wanna go over a little bit regarding major construction contracts. So for information regarding Caltrans's major construction and maintenance projects, your best resource will be Caltrans's Contractors Corner, um, which is located on Caltrans's website. And Contractors Corner will give you general information. It also shows the advertisements, um, bidding awards, and also cost data. Um, you even have access to see which primes are looking at which projects and see if there are any primes that are advertising for help. Um, so now that you know a little bit about where to look for um, those major construction projects that are over uh, 388,000, let's talk about you know, contracts and projects that are under that dollar amount. So projects that are under that $388,000 threshold are what we call minor B projects. And this category also includes emergency work. So immediately following storms, earthquakes, or other natural disasters, Caltrans often elects to immediately contract with highway construction firms to begin cleanup and repair work. And they can't always wait uh, to bid a project for work. Uh, District 11's emergency work coordinators are Harwell Antoy and Julio Reyes. And for any inquiries regarding the district's minor B program um, or for emergency work specific to District 11, you may email d11.minorb at dot.ca.gov and you can request to be added to D11's list. Um, you'll wanna make sure that in your email, you're including your company name, your address, as well as your contact name, and then how they can contact you. So your phone, your cell, um, email address, and then also um, your license number and classification, your DIR number, your small business certification information, and then a brief description of the services that you provide. Now on this slide, you'll see a list of links for different resources, such as the D11 small business website, uh, the Caltrans website, and also the Office of Civil Rights 
uh, and our outreach events calendar. It also includes the link to um, the NAICS codes website, and that's where you can find detailed information on the codes to help you determine which ones are applicable for your company. The link uh, to the state contract and procurement registration system or skippers is also listed and that's where you can look up past bids and also see what other departments are purchasing. I do want to highlight the second bullet. Uh, which is for the link to Cali procure. And so on Cali procure is where you can find the construction contracts that are under that $388,000 threshold. So the minor B contracts. Um, Caltrans are, I'm sorry, Caltrans uh, partners with DGS to make um, doing business with the state easier. And DGS are the ones that maintain the Cali Procure Registry, uh, as well as the California State Contracts Registry. That's another name for it, but we call it Cali Procure. Um, and it's, this is really the online portal, portal where many of Caltrans's bidding and contracting opportunities are advertised. The functions that are available on Cali Procure include bidder registration, where all bidders can set up their profile. Um, SB and DVBE firms are already pre-registered in the system, so they're able to update their profiles and also their desired notifications. And then you can also use Cali Procure to become certified. So you can go in here to begin the process to get your SB, DVBE, or SB for the purpose of public work certification. And as I mentioned, as if you're already certified, then you're pre-registered and you can go in and update your information as needed. And then lastly, on Cali Procure, you can search for bid opportunities and also receive notifications on these opportunities as well. We also offer 30 minute virtual appointments via WebEx. So if any of the information that I provided today, you'd like you know, more details on it, it really was a high level overview, but we do offer those 30 minute one-to-one -one appointments via WebEx so that we can address any additional questions or if you maybe need help walking through Cali Procure or Contractors Corner, um, we're here to help you with that process as well, as far as showing you around and how to navigate. Um, or if you just want additional resources outside of Caltrans, um, we can also point you in that direction. Uh, our information to contact us is on the slide. It's d11.smallbusiness.dot.ca.gov. And I'll go ahead and open the floor up for questions. Maria, if we have any questions from our audience. Hi, Alex. I do not see, I had a question, but that's specific to the attendees company. Um, I do not have any questions that's small business related. So I, and I, what I did was I put our email address in the chat box. So anyone can feel free to save that. And once again, our presentation, the entire presentation will be sent out to attendees today. Um, and if you have additional questions after the event, feel free to reach out to our team. So that is it. Perfect. Thank you, Maria. All right. So I do want to thank all of our guest speakers and our presenters that were able to provide such valuable information in today's first Clean California and Small Business event. Uh, we do hope that all of our participants found today's content beneficial. Again, we will be providing the recording um, and we'll also share um, the presentation to all those that were in attendance today. If you do have any follow-up questions or you need additional information, again, you can reach out to us at our small business inbox. With that being said, I'd like to wish everyone a wonderful day and thank you for joining us.